Welcome ladies and gentlemen. So what I'd like to do is show you how to factor um, trinomial, higher order trinomials, polynomials, as but with three terms. So, you know, we spent a lot of time, or at least I've gone over a lot of times, if you've taken my course or watching my videos on quadratics, factoring quadratic is a big, big portion. We talk about, you know, doing a whole bunch of factoring quadratic problems. And higher order polynomials usually trick up a lot of students because, as you can see, um, they're not raised to the second power anymore. And, you know, a lot of times when we had something, you know, in the ax squared plus bx plus c, in quadratic form like x squared plus um, 5x plus 4, what we basically were trying to look to do is say, what two numbers multiplied to give me my value c, which in this case was 4, but then added to give me, give me my value b, which in this case is 5. So we went through the factors of 4 and said, all right, what two numbers multiply to give me 4 but add to give me 5? And we could realize that's going to be a positive 4 and a positive 1. Therefore, we could write that in a factored form. of x plus 4 times x plus 1, because if we were to apply FOIL back again, we would get back that trinomial. So that was kind of the basic kind of review again of what to do. But now what we say is, well, if we're multiplying to give me um, x squared, then that made sense. Well, how do we do it to be x to the fourth? Well, I want to kind of present this to you. Remember, when we have a trinomial factor is going to produce two binomials multiplied out. Well, if I change this problem to x to the fourth and this squared, Basically, what I'm looking into doing is my first product, the x times x, I need it to be x to the fourth, not x squared anymore. So if I rewrote these as x squared, x squared times x squared is x to the fourth. And that's really kind of an important thing. So what the main important thing that um, I like to do then is kind of use some substitution. I am going to say x to the fourth is, or I'm going to call x squared equal to x to the fourth and x squared equal to x. And what this is going to do is this is going to allow me to factor it in what I'm comfortable with. So if I rewrote this as x squared minus 6x plus 5, now I can go back to what I'm used to, what I'm familiar with. What two numbers multiply to give me 5, add to give me negative 6? Well, those two numbers are going to be negative 5 and negative 1. Negative 5 times negative 1 is positive 5, and they add up to give me negative 6. So therefore, I can write this as x um, minus 5 times x minus 1. However, again, remember, we're not trying to factor a quadratic. We're trying to factor x squared minus 6x squared plus 5. I'm sorry, x to the fourth. So if I'm trying to factor to the fourth power, not the second power, that means my first two terms need to be x squared minus 5 times x squared minus 1. So the factors are exactly the same. The only thing, the only thing I'm doing is I'm increasing the power of my first two terms of each factor. And if you were to multiply that out again using your FOIL, you would see that how that's going to give us x to the fourth minus 6x squared plus 5. Um, so again, just using that same type of thinking, um, working in on our next problem. However, our next problem, we already have a equals 1. And you know I cover a lot of these problems, and we're going to do some in this case, um, where I'm going to think my way through it. I'm not going to do the long way. Um, but again, before we even get to that case, the first thing we always want I always want to do is look to factor out a GCF. And you can see all of these coefficients here are divisible and constant are divisible by 2. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to factor out a 2. So I have 2 times uh, x squared plus 5x, x to the fourth, uh, plus 4. Oops, I guess I did do that problem again. So now, again, you can see, all right, so basically it's, again, another factoring, same exact factoring problem. That's squared. However, again, my first two terms, when I'm multiplying them, it's not, I don't need to get x squared. I need to get x to the fourth. So what two numbers multiply to give you 4, add to give you 5? Well, that's going to be um, x plus 4 times x plus 1. However, x times x gives me x squared. I need it to give me x to the fourth. And again, if you were to multiply, um, multiply these out, again, let me just show you this. 2 times x, x squared times x squared is x to the fourth. 4 times x squared is a positive 4x squared. x squared times 1 is x squared. 4 times 1 is positive 4. 2 times x to the fourth plus 5x squared plus 4. So you notice by multiplying this out, I get back my original solution. And then if I was to distribute that 2, I'd get back the total original problem. All right. Um, however, we've talked about everything in the, you know, into the second power. Or now we've learned how to the fourth power. But what about to the third power? Well, there aren't two factors, you know, x and x that we can raise to power that's going to produce a trinomial 
where we multiply them, that's going to give us a power of 3. So again, what we're going to want to do is factor out an x. That leaves me with x squared plus x minus 6. Well, I guess, guess what? Just by factoring out the x, I'm back to a quadratic. This is a little bit more familiar territory. What two numbers multiply to give me negative 6, add to give me positive 1, because that's my coefficient right there is 1. And again, sometimes you might want to um, think, since my coefficient is positive, that means my larger factor is going to be positive. So I could do 6 times negative 1, or I could do 3 times negative 2. And therefore, you can see that the two factors um, that are going to give me a positive 1 are 3 and negative 2. So I have x times uh, x plus 3 times x minus 2 is my factored form. All right, in this case, I have a x squared as, um, but I see that all the terms have an x, and all the terms are divisible by 3. So rather than trying to factor this, which you easily could do, why don't we factor out the GCFs in each case? So if I factor out a 3x squared, that's going to leave me with x squared minus 2x, uh, let's see, minus 8. Okay. So again, now what we're looking for is what two numbers multiply to give you negative 8, add to give me negative 2. Now my middle term is negative. That means the larger of my two factors of negative 8 has to be negative. So if I do negative 8, so it's negative 8 times 1, negative 4 times 2, and that's it. And notice, because since these add up, to have, since these factors have to multiply to give me negative 8, which they do, but since they have to add up to give me negative 2, that's why I said the larger factor has to be negative. Now, obviously, you can see that negative 4 plus 2 gives me my negative 2. So those are my two factors, 3x squared times x minus 4 times x plus 2. All right. Um, that's supposed to be a squared. I don't know. Yeah, that's squared. I don't know where the 4 came from. I miswrote that. OK. So now let's kind of get into a problem here where we now have to multiply when a is not equal to 1. So again, we'd like to factor out a 2. Unfortunately, we can't. We'd like to factor out an x to get it to an x squared, but we can't. So we know that uh, we're going to have two factors. We know if we're going to get our two factors to give us x to the fourth, we have to have not only just an x times x, but we have to have a 2x times an x. And to get us x to the fourth, it has to be 2x squared and x squared. Then we know that our two numbers have to multiply to give us 7. So it's either going to be positive 7 and positive 1 or negative 7 and negative 1. But since those two terms have to add up to give us a negative 15, we know that my two factors are going to be negative 7 and negative 1. And there's really only two possibilities. It could be a negative 1 here, a negative 7 there, or it could be 2x minus 7 here and x squared minus 1 here. But those are my only two possibilities. One of those answers is correct. And again, the way to check this is your first two terms, you have to make sure that gives you the first term your trinomial. 2x squared times x squared gives you. Please call the main office, Mary. Sorry. 2x squared times x squared gives you 2x to the fourth. Negative 7 times negative 1 gives you positive 7. That is true for both of these answers. However, the decider is what the middle terms are. Notice how the middle terms are different, right? The middle and the outer terms are different. So that's what is going to give us our middle term of answer. And we've got to see which one's correct. So we have negative 7 times x squared, which is negative 7x squared. And then 2x times negative 1 is a negative 2x squared. So that would be negative 7x squared minus 2x squared, which would give us a negative 9x squared, which is not what we're looking for. However, if we check the, next, the first one I did, 2x squared times negative 7 is negative 14x squared. Negative 1 times x is negative 1x squared. That gives you negative 15x squared. That means that is our correct form. So therefore, I can just erase. There is a long way um, to go ahead and factor when a is not equal to 1 of these types of problems. And if you want to, um, I have tons of videos on those, so look it up. Um, factoring when a is not equal to 1 using the AC method. There are slow way methods. But for the sake of this video, I don't want to take all the time for that. Um, in this last one, uh, again, I have it to the fifth power. I don't want to factor anything to the fifth power. We've only talked about x squared and uh, x squared and x to the fourth. I should have actually done an x uh, to the sixth power. Um, actually, you know what? Let's do that. I'm going to change this problem. Let's do x to the seventh, x to the fourth, and then x. Yeah, I like this. OK, so in this case, you can see that, again, the, only, the main important thing is I want to see what can I factor out. Well, I can only factor out an x. So I'm left with this. I have 4x to the 6th plus 10x cubed plus 4. No, that's not what I want. Um, 
Yeah, okay, yeah, that is right. That's right, okay. Now, um, a couple things, x cubed squared. Yep. So a couple things we notice is, can this looks like kind of a perfect square trinomial. If you remember my previous video, we could factor this. You could also, um, you can't factor out a four, but you could factor out a two as well. But I'm leaving out the four, I'm leaving that out because I kind of notice four is a squared number. And whenever I see a squared number in the beginning or the end of a trinomial, I'm automatically thinking special products or special factoring techniques. Either difference of two squares, which has to have two terms, which just has three, or perfect square trinomial. And again, remember for it to be a perfect square trinomial, I would have to have um, 2x cubed, 2x squared, that'd be 2x cubed squared plus 10x cubed plus 2 squared. Oh, I really didn't need to do this problem, 4x, no. 4x, oh, I didn't want to do this problem. Fi oh, I wrote the problem down wrong. OK, my bad. Let's redo this problem. That actually isn't a perfect square trinomial, 4 to 8. Yeah, it's not going to work. It's not a perfect square trinomial. Let's go back to my original problem. 4x to the fifth plus 10x uh, to the fourth plus 4x cubed. So it looked like it was a perfect square trinomial, but it's not. I'm sorry, I wrote down the wrong problem. Um, so let's factor out a cubed, x cubed. And therefore, we're left with, actually, let's factor out a 2. So we factor out a 2x cubed, and we're left with a 2x squared plus 5x, and then plus 2. So by factoring out that 2, you see, obviously, it's not a different square, perfect square trinomial. Even if you would have left those 2 in there, you would have had 4x cubed plus 10x um, 4x, ah, well, that was a total, I changed the powers in that. But anyways, it's not a, I was trying to make a, trying to do something, and I apologize for that, but I'm not going to redo the whole video. Let's just finish this up. Um, but in this case, we need to go ahead and factor. Uh, again, what we're looking for is some binomials. So we're looking for, we know our first two terms. Have to multiply to give me 2x squared, so that's going to be 2x and x. My last two terms have to multiply to give me 2. So it's either going to be, um, it's either positive 2 and positive 1, or negative 2 and negative 1. But since my middle term is positive, I'm going to want to use my factors that are positive. And therefore, they need to, the inner and the outer need to add to give me 5x. Well, if I did um, plus 1 plus 2 here, I'd have 2 times x plus 2x times 1, which would give me 4x, which is close, but not it. But if I just swap the 2 and the 1, then I have 2x times 2, which is 4x, and x times 1, which is 1x, 4x plus 1x is 5x which is my middle term, and therefore I have now factored um, that completely. So sorry about that at the end. I tried to get a little creative, and I shouldn't have. Um, but that is how you uh, factor higher order polynomials. Thanks.